Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 14th. First up, this was sent in by my buddy 1954 Shadow, Bob. This is Reinventing the Wheel. Now this is a bicycle add-on, which I reported on a lot of them before. These things can run anywhere from like $350 and up. What they do is basically you change either the front or the rear wheel on your bicycle. They usually are made to fit just one particular type of standard bicycle, such as one with a 26 inch wheel. And uh, basically they either, you have some kind of little control to help give you some power for the bicycle to where you don't have to pedal at all, or some are pedal assist. Well this is kind of like pretty innovative. This was developed by MIT and Copenhagen, a, a firm in Copenhagen, and they're selling these now. It's a little bit expensive. It's around the $700 mark for this, but the cool thing about this is it's super, super easy to install. All you basically do is just change out the rear tire. It's all wireless. It's all Bluetooth. It works through your smartphone. Uh, I'm not sure if it works through um, an, a pad or something like that or a tablet computer, but it does work through your smartphone through Bluetooth, so everything is enclosed. Nothing to have to uh, do other than just put the tire on and it's ready to go. You, you obviously do have to download the app, though, onto your uh, Android device or whatever to make it work, but I think it's a really, really cool idea. It does have a 48-volt lithium replacement battery, which if you actually compare the, the cheaper kits around $350 that you do have to actually do a little bit more wiring on the bike, if you upgrade on them to a lithium battery from the standard lead-acid battery, you're still talking about the same price range. So um, it also has regenerative braking, and when you go downhills too, it recharges the battery so you can get a little bit more range. I think the range is typically something around 30 miles, which is pretty decent. If it's on a standard 26-inch tire, and it takes about four hours to fully recharge. I think, uh, let's see, that'd be about the only connection you'd have to do really is just to plug in for the, you know, and that's not, that doesn't stay connected. It's the only thing you have to do, plug it in and recharge it probably about once a day or whenever. So I think that's a pretty cool idea. And as usual, all of the links will be down below in the descriptions to all the articles I'm talking about. Next one, this is from Brian West. I suppose if you, uh, have one of those kind of parties where you like to do gag gifts, although this would be a little bit expensive. There's this thing called the Bluetooth glove, and basically it's the left-handed glove has the electronics in it to where you can hold it up like this and connect with your smartphone, and you're actually talking on your phone through your glove. So it has some kind of a microphone speaker arrangement, and then you're walking down the street with this glove on, and they say the glove also has a capability of doing the touch screen too, so they must have something put in the index finger to be able to do that. But uh, around 80 bucks, so uh, for your average person, your average gag gift, probably a little bit on the expensive side. Um, but really, if you have extra money to spend and you want your friend to look kind of goofy walking down the street talking on their phone, um, it's, it works within, I think, 12 meters range. That's just a little bit under 50 foot, so you don't even have to have your phone necessarily with you. I think it's basically this is meant for people that are walking down the street in cold environments, and you could have your phone in your pocket or whatever and basically do all the rest with this uh, little glove kind of deal. So if you got money to waste and uh, want to give people a gag gift, uh, try this for around 80 bucks. This next one comes from my friend John Kraus, and this is a 3D printed whole heart. Now, I've done a lot of articles on different types of 3D printers, and I don't think I've done one about a medical printer yet. At least I don't remember doing one like that, but this uh, scientist that uh, is working in the Cardiovascular Innovation Institute out of University of Louisville is working on, the, he's actually thinking that within the next 10 years, the way they're going and proceeding, they should be able to, within three hours, just put the design on and print out a whole functioning heart. Uh, they say it's not really that complex, and right now they've got the technology up to where you can print veins and arteries, which to me is the most interesting part, too. I think that may end up being the better development out of it because they expect a lot of offshoots. I remember uh, a lot of friends and stuff like that having to have their legs cut open and having uh, some of their veins taken out of their legs and stuff like that to be used elsewhere in their body. It sure would be nice if they could take some cells, and they claim... For printing this heart, they don't need to uh, actually take heart tissue. They can just take uh, some of your fat cells and then separate the particular cells out from your fat cells that they need to produce this heart. So evidently they could just take a sample of your fat and then do the veins and the arteries too and do something like that. So I think that's something that a lot of people would be a lot happier about if they can get that innovation up to just make it so that you don't have to end up being cut open and, and be the donor for your own veins and arteries and stuff like that and just end up printing them out. Um, other people are kind of poo-pooing it because they say, well, it's going to be real expensive. Well, 
what isn't when it's innovative and new. So that's just kind of the way it goes. But just being able to do it, I think, is pretty fantastic. And this next one is also from Brian West. Um, this is a Kickstarter project. This is a um, quadcopter called Spiri. It's not the very first open source one. I believe there's an Arduino uh, quadcopter out there. But this one is kind of neat. They keep the price down. If you're a, a donor of up to about $520 in January, you're going to be able to get one of these little Spiri quadcopters. And they've specifically built it with the idea of making it uh, crash resistant. They've got these kind of little ducts around it to protect the propellers. And then also they have made the parts that do tend to break in a severe crash easily to replace and very inexpensive to replace. So um, just putting those ideas forward is pretty good. And if you want to get a chance, um, check that out. I haven't seen a videos yet of any kind of test flights because evidently um, it's also going to be in fully re the, the people that donated to the Kickstarter project get the first of them, but it's still going to be considered in the development stages even after January. So if you get one in January, don't expect everything to be perfect. Don't expect all the bugs to be worked out, but you will get one of the first models. And I'm thinking, um, I think according to the article, they said sometime in March or something like that, they'll have um, an actual public release date on it. And last up, the Jade Rabbit. I don't know if any of you have caught it on the news, but we have a, a third country now that has joined the, uh, the, the moon landing as far as doing a soft landing in a rover, the Chinese government successfully at about 9 p.m. yesterday landed a, a lander with a rover inside, and this ro rover is called the Jade Rabbit after the mythical Chinese story of the Jade Rabbit that lives on the moon. And there's a picture from space.com of it actually rolling off of the lander and onto the moon's surface down the little ramp. So uh, it's landed in the Bay of Rainbows and... Uh, Maybe it will give us a little bit of impetus to put a little bit of money towards NASA and get on with our space program. We still have not left low orbit in decades, so um, yeah, maybe China will actually get a, get us on the on the ballpark to be doing something like that. But yeah, congratulations to China and their space program. They're also talking about in 2017 sending another craft to the moon to bring back soil samples. So NASA, be forewarned, you've got some competition now. So anyway, I've got a couple of articles next week from Steve Arsenault and O2 Big Kev. Thank you, everybody, for sending in the articles. 90% of my show lately has been just because of the viewers sending me in some really cool stuff. So keep it up, guys. I really appreciate it a lot. And take care, everybody. I will see you next week.